Hey, I'm Amanda. I'm one of the accountability coaches at Club Kickbox. And I wanted to give you just a little short video on the meal plan and how it all works. Just you can watch it over and over again. You can listen to it to put yourself to bed at night, uh, whatever works, but at least I'll have all of the info. So let me share my screen. And this is what your meal plan should look like, at least uh, the basics of it. Now, the actual amounts of food might change because that's based on your starting weight, um, but the types of foods will not change. So the first thing, eat only the foods on this list, only the foods on this list. It's a pretty exhaustive list. So we just want you to eat these foods. Um, now, how do you make up your meals? Well, you use these handy dandy uh, wheels right here in the middle. So you, for breakfast and lunch, you're going to have the same types of foods, not the exact same food, that would be super boring, but the same types of foods. So one serving of protein, that's blue protein, one serving of veggies, that's green, and one serving of carbs right here. Okay. Same thing for lunch. One serving of protein, veggies, carbs. For dinner, little something different. You're going to have one serving of protein, one serving of veggies, and one serving of added fat. Now that doesn't mean that you don't have fat at breakfast or lunch. You do. It's just typically included in your protein sources. However, for dinner, you're going to add fat in. So it might be something, um, like an avocado um, or a half of an avocado here for, you know, on a salad, or you might use cooking oil to cook your veggies, right? Or legit, I've seen people with just two tablespoons of peanut butter on their plate that they're just eating. That's totally fine. We don't care how you put together your meal. We just care that you have all of these things represented and not extra stuff represented, okay? Now, in between your meals, you're going to see here these protein shakes. These are not full meal replacement shakes. We do have those. Those are in our recipe book, our cookbook. Um, and those include all of your different things. So it might be a shake that has protein powder and spinach and um, berries, right? And that would be a full meal replacement shake, which, by the way, I highly recommend putting spinach in your morning uh, protein shake if you're doing that because you get your veggies in and you cannot taste it. It's obscured by the other tastes. So I will say drink it kind of quickly because it turns a little greenish brown if you wait too long. Anyway, back to the subject at hand. These protein shakes in between. They are not mandatory. You do not have to have them. But if you are hungry between meals, a protein shake is the way to go. We want you to have that protein Protein is king on this meal plan, all right? So it can be just protein powder. We sell some at the gym. It's great um, mixed with water. That's totally fine. Or we recommend these pre-made protein shakes because they're easy. You can carry them. I have them everywhere, like in my car, in my backpack, at the gym, even here on my desk because I never want to be too far without one. This is a great way to stave off hunger and help you make good choices. So Premier Protein makes a brand I really like. Other people, Brian at the gym, he really likes the muscle milk. So it just depends on your own personal taste. As long as it has 20 grams or more of protein and one gram or less of sugar, you're golden. Okay, totally fits the requirements. So 20 grams or more of protein, one gram or less of sugar. This is not in and of itself really a good meal in and of itself. It's not enough to really fill you up for like breakfast or lunch. So be sure that you're adding your vegetables and your carbs to it um, to get you through the day. Speaking of which, that is why we have carbs at breakfast and lunch. They give us that energy to help us get through the day. And then we have fat at dinner to help fill us up overnight and sustain us while we're sleeping, et cetera. But we don't need as much energy at night, so we don't have the carbs, right? Um, I also want to point out here, a lot of people often ask me, when do I take my various supplements um, to have them help you maximize your uh, fitness journey the best? 
Well, in the morning, you absolutely want to take your burn AM when you first get up. I always do that when I'm hyperhydrating with my water. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, if you're in your first seven days and you're taking your last minute cleanse, take that in the morning. Take your uh, bulletproof vitality, your multivitamin, if you're going to have that. Then your uh, pre-step and your intra are your workout buddies. So whenever you're working out, you take your pre-step about 30 minutes beforehand. You take your intra either with your class or directly after. So that helps set you up for your class and then helps you heal and start that muscle building right after your class. The others, burn PM, it depends on when you have cravings. I have cravings in the afternoon, so I take it with my lunch. Other people don't have cravings until the evening and you can take it with your dinner. So just see which one works better for you. Um, the test storm and hormone optimizer, you can take either at breakfast or at dinner, doesn't matter. I would recommend you take them with food and just make, you, make sure you do it every day. Um, that's most important and at the same time of the day. So whichever time you're most likely to remember, whether that's breakfast or dinner, just choose one of those two times and take it at that same time every day. Sleep multiplier, of course, you're not going to take that in the morning. Duh. You're going to take it at night, about 90 minutes before you want to go to sleep. So I always, when I'm kind of settling in for my evening, maybe I'm turning on the TV, watching those couple of shows, or I'm watching the baseball game, um, I always take it then. So, and then that just kind of preps me, and then I'm ready to go to sleep. So those are when you take your supplements and take them every day. They build on each other and they really help you have great success. Some of them, you really don't even start to see the full effects until like 30 to 45 days in. So you want to take them and know that they're working, but don't get freaked out that you're not seeing anything. It takes a little bit of time. So let's go on to the next page. So this top part here is your uh, shopping helpers guide. You do not need to buy everything on this list. That's not what it is. For a week, you might pick three to four protein sources. So what are the protein sources you're going to have? And right here, if you plan out your meals, it will definitely help you to know which things to, to uh, buy at the grocery store. Your fats, you, depending on which ones you're using, avocados, obviously you're going to need to buy more often, but your, your cooking oil, you might buy one bottle and be good for your whole 28 days or, or I mean, sorry, uh, your whole six weeks, right? Depends. Same thing with your carbs, same thing with your veggies. If you're having frozen veggies, you can buy them all up front. If you're doing fresh, then you're going to want to buy them more often. Okay. But this just kind of helps you organize yourself. Um, what is down here is super important. I definitely like to, to point it out. Number one, don't make your meals boring. You will never stick with it. If you're eating dry chicken and like just some lettuce every day, you're going to be bored of that in that half a week. So mix it up, use spices, use sauces like mustard, um, balsamic vinegar, lemon juice, uh, hot sauces, those are great. Salsa even is very, um, it, it's locale enough that it kind of qualifies in this setting. The only thing I would say about spices is, um, or dry rubs is be careful of anything barbecue related because that has a lot of sugar in it. So you don't wanna, you wanna be very careful of the sugar. Um, drinks, you can have as many zero calorie drinks as you want. So coffee with no, you know, black coffee, um, unsweetened tea, uh, Mio flavorings for your water, totally fine. Iced tea with no sugar in it, perfect. Those things are all totally fine. Um, you can use zero calorie sweeteners like a Steva, Stevia or Splenda. Those are fine as well. Now, so I want to say this green line, which you may or may not be able to read, but I will read it for you. It says, as long as it has zero calories, you can have as much of it as you want, even if it's not on the list. Okay. So again, things like coffee with no sweeteners, um, you know, water. Uh, and then there are a couple of things. Walden Farms is a brand that makes zero calorie syrup, salad dressings, even some like uh, for coffee sweeteners and that kind of stuff. And they're really good. You can find them in Giant. You can find them in Wegmans. Um, so look around and find those because I highly, highly recommend them. Now, let's talk water. On top of 
what you're eating and eating well, you need to hydrate your body and it will help you with a lot of things. It'll help you with any kind of constipation or those kinds of issues. It will help you look good, like your skin, your hair, and it will also help fill you up so that you don't, you aren't hungry so often. So you should be drinking half of your body weight in ounces of water a day, right? So if I weigh 150, I should be drinking 75 ounces of water a day, okay? Every day. The best way to do that is to hyperhydrate a couple of times a day. So that means that you drink 16 ounces of water all in one time. You just slug it down, 16 ounces of water. Do that first thing in the morning, right after you weigh yourself on your scale, and you'll be off to a good start. Okay. It also helps you to digest your um, supplements and things. So, hyperhydration, totally key to this. All right. So that's about it. For, oh, one other thing. Sorry, that wasn't it. So I did want to just tell you that overall, the meal plan is a high protein, low fat, low carb, no sugar diet, no sugar. Okay. So a couple of things that's going to mean number one, you can probably go through sugar detox, depending on how much sugar you eat right now. Um, that can feel like headaches, jitteriness, nausea for some people, extreme irritability, um, sleeplessness. There are a lot of things that can come from sugar detox. Okay. And that can set in anywhere from three to five days in. So you can definitely experience that. Good news is it only lasts a couple of days at most, but if you are kicking the sugar monkey off the back, right? You're like, goodbye, sugar monkey. I don't need you anymore. Well, that sugar monkey is going to try to hold on. You're going to feel those bad feelings. If he's hanging on by one claw, one hand, the last thing you want to do is feed that sugar monkey because then he's going all in and you can't get away from him. So do not feed the sugar monkey. That's the worst thing you can do. Okay. Second thing I want to tell you is um, we are going to upload some a cookbook in the group within the app. So take a look for that. It's got some great recipes. Um, one that it doesn't have in there, though, that's one of my favorite hacks is for those of you that like, you know, Starbucks iced lattes, like that's yummy. And you're really going to miss that because there's no milk on this, not even almond milk, none, no milk, no dairy on this. Okay. There's also no cheese and there's no mayonnaise and there's no alcohol. If you're looking for any of those things, you're out of luck. But happy hack is... My daughter brews her coffee in the morning and she pours in, well, not typically the chocolate protein uh, mix, but she puts in a vanilla protein. So she makes her own latte and I know she's getting protein in with it, which is super awesome. So that is a great hack for you all. Um, that's it. I think now, really, I think that's it. And if you do have any questions, of course, please see us in the gym. We're always happy to help. Bye.